Welcome to Adams Cable High School Basketball. And today we are at Forest City High School for a Lackawanna League Division IV basketball matchup between the Elk Lake Warriors and the Forest City Foresters. All brought to you today by Adams Cable Service, by the Comfort Doctors, T.E. Small and Son, Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing of Carbondale, by Jerry's Tire and Auto Service, by your local Napa Auto Parts store, Carbondale Auto Parts, Tom's Floor Shop, your first step to a beautiful home, Main Street Childs, Beston's Auto Body and Collision Center, NJS Systems and Controls, Route 6 Mayfield, and by Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated, with locations at 74 North Main Street and 2 Hospital Street. And your starting lineups brought to you today by the Roselle Department Store. Alongside Glenn Miskowski, Claire Seymour, Chris Nanfeld and Sal Balzoni. I'm Steve Young. It's time for Lackawanna League Division IV High School Basketball. The Elk Lake Warriors are in town as they bring an overall mark of five wins and nine losses into today's contest. In Division IV, a record of two wins and three losses. And for the Foresters, Glenn, they are overall at seven and six, but in Division IV, they're undefeated with a five and all mark. They're play they started off slow, Steve, and uh as they as they moved along, they got they played a, a pretty good uh, schedule of some tough teams from the other divisions. And as they as they progress, they got they've gotten better and better. Uh, they are uh, they are uh, five and zero, oh, but for the first time in a long time, I think uh, there are no halves. So that's that's not a, I, I never liked that because I always thought maybe just maybe if you got someone hurt and lose a few games early when you get back you're in a hole if you have, you don't get a chance in the second half well the foresters at 5 and 0 oh in the division they had a big win uh, recently glenn as they defeated blue ridge who was previously undefeated by the score of 60 to 58 when you take a look at how they got started they lost to Valley View in the season opener and Carbondale area. They, then the Foresters picked up a win over Honesdale. They went on. They went on to lose their next three games. They went on a four-game winning streak. And coming into this game, Glenn, they have won their last two. Well, they, I'll tell you, they're starting to play well. I was just asking the coach before. He says if we can play some good defense and and and, and make some foul shots, he thinks we can be in we can be in every game. So if that's the way he's thinking, that's a positive way to be. And so far, it's working because they are five and zero. Oh. And for Elk Lake. Uh, they lost to Carbondale in the season opener and uh, here and there they picked up a win or two but uh, they have lost their last three ball games to Wyoming Seminary Montrose and Susquehanna so here tonight it will be the Foresters and the Elk Lake Warriors here on Adams Cable High School basketball we are going to step aside and go to a break and when we return more pregame highlights on tonight's Lackawanna League Division 4 battle between Elk Lake and Forest City after this timeout. Save a check, save a stamp, and save yourself time with Adams Cable Easy Pay. A simple one-time setup of automatic payments from your preferred bank account or credit card is all you need to do to enroll. It's fast, convenient, secure, and best of all, free. Never worry about a late payment again. Adams Cable makes it effortless. For more information regarding online payment options and to enroll in EasyPay, please visit AdamsCable.com. You deserve expert heating, cooling, and plumbing service. So, just call Spall. T.E. Spall & Son has been serving Northeastern Pennsylvania with expert customer service for 36 years in all phases of residential and commercial heating, cooling, and plumbing. So, just call Spall for the expert service you deserve. Visit them at callspall.com. For service, remember, just call Spall. When it comes to keeping your vehicle maintained and problem free, Jerry's Tire and Auto Service in Carbondale has you covered. Call Jerry's for brake service, oil changes, state inspections, quality tires, wheel alignment and rotation to enhance your vehicle's performance. I'm Jerry Jablonowski. Call 282 Tire for dependable automotive service in name brand tires at Jerry's Tire and Auto Service in Carbondale. Welcome back to the Julius Brzezelski Gym alongside Glenn Muskowski, Steve Young for Lackawanna League Division IV Basketball, Forest City Foresters and the Elk Lake Warriors in the Junior Varsity Contest. 
Well, Elk Lake Glen in that ball game got out to a huge lead, and then Forest City tried to come back, but they were defeated here tonight by the score of 39 to 20. Yeah, it was it was a good comeback for Forest City. They had opportunities, just missed too many too many shots, too many four shots down the end of the game, and you know those things usually don't go in, and if they do, you're lucky, and sometimes you could pull it out, but not too often. Well, the Foresters, uh, they've been on a roll, as we mentioned. Uh, overall mark of 7-6, and six, undefeated in the division. And they have some players who can score. Dylan Bezek, the 6'4 senior, is averaging 14 points a ball game, And D.J. Heath is putting up 13 for the Foresters. For Elk Lake, their leading scorer is their 6'6 senior center, Wyatt Castlebury, averaging 12 points a ball game. Well, yeah, Steve, uh, this Heath and, uh, and Bezek have, have been the mainstay for, uh, from for, for Forest City since the beginning of the year, and they're steady and they're pretty solid players. Don't know much about this this Castleberry, but uh, as I'm following him in the, in the, the daily, uh, and I chart every every game that they have, he, he's put he's been putting up some nice points, uh, but they're struggling a little bit uh, with the rest of the team. Uh, Elk Lake has a pretty balanced offensive attack as. Uh, Logan Ayotte is averaging uh, almost nine points a ball game. And uh, Dawson Sherman, a 5'8 sophomore point guard, is putting up eight a game. So we'll see how things play out here in this Lackawanna League Division IV high school basketball matchup between the Foresters and the Warriors. We are going to step aside and come right back with more pregame highlights and the tip-off after this timeout on Adams Cable High School Basketball. Never know how. Never know how. Your local Napa dealer, Carbondale Auto Parts, has been serving the area for over 38 years with quality automotive replacement parts, tools, and accessories. Experience the Napa know-how difference with great service you've come to know and trust from the staff at Carbondale Auto Parts, your Napa know-how folks. Napa know-how, Napa know-how. Looking for the right flooring for your home, lifestyle, and budget? Visit Tom's Floor Shop in Childs for the latest advancements in flooring to enhance the rooms in your home. The experts at Tom's Floor Shop are there to help you style your home in contemporary elegance and classic beauty with a wide variety of name brand carpeting, hardwood, vinyl, and professional installation. All roads lead to where great floors begin at Tom's Floor Shop Exit 6 off the Casey Highway in Childs. Welcome back to the Julius Prozelski Gym for Lackawanna League Division IV High School Basketball. It's Elk Lake and Forest City. Gwen, when you take a look at the standings in Division IV, wow, uh, you've got the Foresters at 5-0, Blue Ridge and 4-1, along with Montrose, Elk Lake right there at 2-3. and three. So uh, we'll see how things play out as the season progresses. As you mentioned, they do not have a first and a second half, so yeah, I don't, anything could happen, but the Foresters right now lead the division. Yeah, I I, I, I don't like that, Steve. I, I always thought, you know, as I said, if, you, if something happens, you, you start off bad, you have a bad game, you lose, and, you, and if someone gets hurt, has to sit for a couple of games, and then you can't, can't you, when you get them back, well, you're down two, three games to the, to the leaders if they're undefeated, and you don't have a chance then. You, you just struggle all the way through the whole. But uh, it is what it is, so you have, to, you have to do what you can do to stay healthy and play good. We will be back here again coming up this Friday night for more high school basketball as the Foresters will take on the Sabres of Susquehanna. So we're just about set for the tip off here at the Julius Brzezelski gym. Nice cozy small gym and looking forward to this matchup between the Warriors and the Foresters. And now your starting lineups for today's game brought to you by Roselle Department Store in Carbondale. At Roselle, you'll find all your school clothing needs, including spirit wear for Carbondale area, Lakeland and Valley View, along with a great selection of apparel for the entire family. Are you attending a formal affair or a special event? Let the experience of Sam Kalura work for you with a perfectly tailored tuxedo by Sarno and Son. Roselle is headquarters for professional laundry and dry cleaning services. Sam and the great staff at Roselle Department Store in Carbondale are proud to present your starting lineups for today's game between the Elk Lake Warriors and the Forest City Foresters. And now, 
We are going to turn things over to public address announcer Bryce Armstrong for the introductions and a look at your starting lineups. Time for basketball here at the Julius Brzezelski Gym. The Forest City Foresters and the Elko Lake Warriors here on Adams Cable High School Basketball. Steve, I, I look around and I, and I, I see this gym and it's and usually it's filled, but you know, who knows why. But well, some great things that happen in the, with these two schools. Two of the great coaches ever, oh. Julius Brzezelski, Red Wallace, right? Absolutely. Some of the great players that Forest City had. Some of the great players that Elk Lake had. Man, it's 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 it's, it's nothing but nothing but nostalgia in here. Why a Castlebury and Bezek at the center court circle, and Elk Lake will control the opening tip, and they will work their half court offense as a Ott will dish off, and Isaac Guestford will launch a three, and it's off the mark, and the Foresters collect the carom, and here they come across mid court quickly. <laughs> DJ Heath to signal in the play, and he will. Give it up to Bezek. 
And right here, the Foresters patient offensively. See, there's something wrong here. There's twice, there's two guys in the, in the same area. And from in the lane, Bezek couldn't finish, and the Warriors come up with the basketball. We are scoreless with just about one minute gone by here in the first quarter, and a traveling violation is called on Isaac Gesper, the 5'8 junior point guard, who is averaging almost eight points a ball game. For City now, they are, they are averaging about 51 points a ball game and giving up 51. Elk Lake averaging 49 while allowing 53. And the Foresters with DJ Heath on the baseline. He's going to be forced to dish off. And in traffic, they force up the shot and it doesn't drop for Braden Piatok. And here come the Warriors. They are coached by Richard Emmons. Overall, they're five and nine in Division Four, two and three. They will give it to Castlebury, and he will dish off. And Ayat tried the layup off the glass. Rebound El uh, Castlebury, and they come up empty at the glass. And the Foresters will bring the ball across midcourt, led by Colin Baylor. Inside they go to Bezik, near side. Bartholomew with an open three, and he knocks it down. That was a nice give the shot. The Foresters a three nothing lead. Good form, nice follow through, perfect. Logan Ayotte setting it up, out near center court, taking control. Noah Gesford, and there is a timeout called with 6:06 remaining here in the first quarter, and the Foresters up by a three nothing advantage. Quick timeout, I think uh, Elk Lake is, is not in sync with what the coach wants on the offensive end. And uh, it's just a simple thing. Call the time, well, let's get it straight and let's, get, let's, let's start doing some, some positive things out there. And it will be Elk Lake to inbound the basketball. Noah Gesford to put the ball in play. And what do Larry we Gabriel the third with a quick whistle. And that will force Elk Lake to inbound once again as Gesford will look to trigger the ball in play and the long pass will go to Isaac Gesford. And they work it to Castlebury, Castlebury trying to post up, banks it off the glass for a deuce. That's a nice strong move by uh, Castlebury. Used his body well. Well, he's averaging Here's 12 half. points a ball game. Here comes the half court press from Bartholomew and company. Half court press into a 2 3 zone. Got to get somebody on, got to get uh, in the gaps, get somebody on the point, get two guys on the wings, and a high and low. He and just moved the ball around the perimeter, look inside. Heath out on the perimeter and company, and it will be Brad Bartholomew with the left-hand dribble. DJ pulls up with a short jump shot. It's off the mark. Here's the turnaround baseline shot that's good by Dylan Bezek. And the Foresters are out to a 5-2 to two lead. I didn't, you know, I didn't realize. I, I saw a Forest City play Carbondale one game. As Isaac Guestwood and, took uh, it to the glass. Uh, I didn't realize. They have some, Forest City has some size out there. Yes, they do. I, I wish I... Well, Dylan Bezik is six foot four. Brad Bartholomew six one. So they do have a little bit of size. As Noah Gesford fires the ball into Isaac Gesford, and an open look there by Dawson Sherman, and he knocks down a three. And we're tied at five. Elk Lake and Forest City. Get somebody in the middle. There it is. Turn and reverse it. And driving is Bezik in the lane. They go up with the shot, and it's good by Braden Piatta. 7-5, the Foresters by two. And Isaac Gesford will run the Elk Lake offense. And a whistle along the baseline as Castlebury took the pass. Foul well, Bezik, I believe, yep. Now that is the first Foul on Bezik, first team foul. Oh, Castlebury takes the inbound lift. pass from in the oh. lane, misfires on the short jumper. In transition, Heath with the basketball. Gives it up, Piatak. And now driving the baseline, they'll work it outside. Bezik, top of the circle. 
And once again, now the Foresters with DJ Heath on the perimeter. They give it to Piatok. Great movement in the offense, but now they're going to get an open look by Bartholomew. Yeah, and he knocks it down one. from beyond the arc. And it's a 10-5 Forrester lead with under four to play here in quarter number one. It's good ball movement, but they got to look inside and get that high-low action going also. Now along the baseline, a lot of traffic there as this will be an open look for Sherman. And Dawson Sherman knocks down a jumper, and it's a three-pointer. And both teams pretty hot from three-point land, and it's a 10-8 Forrester lead. Oh, wow, that's a jump shot from 15 feet away by Did he Beasley. call that bank? <laughs> 12 hey, to 8. It doesn't matter as long as they go in. Isaac Gesper driving, dishing off underneath. Castlebury with the basket and the foul. Wyatt Castlebury, the six foot six senior, draws the foul, and he will be on the free throw line with the Warriors trailing 12 to 10. And Wyatt Castlebury is a 49% free throw shooter this year, converting on 24 of 49 attempts. And he misses. And the quick outlet pass to Heath. Here he comes to the glass. Oh, it's rejected block. by Castlebury. Good block. Good hustle. And it will be Logan Iot dishing off. And Noah Gesford needs help at the guard. Isaac Gesford will take control. They give it to Castlebury, posting up. And he will make a move to the basket, gets his own rebound, and the follow-up ties the game at 12. That, that was a good, strong move. You see, split two defenders. Under three to play here in the first quarter at the Julius Brzezelski Gym. Turnaround shot by Braden Piatok doesn't drop. Rebound Castlebury. And in transition, here comes Elk Lake in a 12-12 deadlock. Isaac Gesford gives it up. Sherman misfires on the outside jumper. Rebound goes to Forest City. Urbis. And Max Urbis is in the ballgame, six foot sophomore. And an open look from the top of the circle doesn't fall for Brad Bartholomew. We're tied at 12, the Warriors and the Foresters here in quarter number one at Forest City High School. Driving and dishing off Sherman. Oh, good ball. They're working right? in the corner. Nice move there. And Ayotte a will pull up with the short jumper and knocks it down. And the Warriors have a two point lead, 14 to 12. Great first quarter of basketball as DJ Heath is matched up with Isaac Gesford. And on the perimeter, Forrester's looking to get the ball inside as we near the one minute mark remaining here in the first quarter. Now they'll switch, they get the ball to Urbis in the, on the baseline. And the Foresters now turn it over. They throw it away, Ayotte intercepted the pass and Logan Ayotte, the sophomore, will set it up for the Warriors who lead 14 to 12 and now they throw the basketball away. No, touch last by the Foresters. Devon Reams will check into the Forrester lineup. Braden Piatok checks out. Warriors with 104 on the clock here in quarter number one. And Logan A. out with the crossover dribble. will bring it back outside and reset the offense. Noah Gesford pounding it inside. Castlebury and a whistle. Foul will be called on the Foresters with 51 seconds to play here in the first quarter. First personal foul on Max Urbis and the team third team foul. And the Warriors having trouble getting the ball in play, and they do. They find Isaac Gesford. And Dawson Sherman puts up a runner off the glass, too short. And the Foresters have it in transition. 43 seconds to play first quarter. Forest City with DJ Heath pulling up with the jumper. Off the mark, Foresters keep it going as Colin Baylor, who's in the ball game, battles for the ball. And they will be forced to inbound with 34 seconds to play. Foresters right now setting it up in their half court offense. Colin Baylor gives it up. 
D.J. Heath with 23 on the clock. Max Zerbus off the turnaround short. Sherman has it for Elk Lake leading by two, 14 to 12, 14 to shoot. And Castlebury with eight seconds on the clock. Isaac Gesford gives it up oh, good from the him. outside. This is Noah Gesford. Shot rolls off the iron and a foul, and it will be called on the Warriors with one second to play. Yeah, that's that was a, that's a tough foul to make. One second on the clock. He just gave him a little bump from behind. 14 to 12. Warriors lead the Foresters. And Forest City will inbound the basketball. They'll just fire it down court. Pass intercepted by Castlebury. And that will bring us to an end of quarter number one here at the Julius Prozelski Gym with Elk Lake leading Forest City 14 to 12 as we go to a break. When you need collision repair, turn to the professionals at Bestin's Auto Body and Collision Center to restore your vehicle back to its original condition. For over 34 years, Bestin's has been providing full service collision repair with exceptional customer service. At Bestin's, their motto is, every job is perfect or it doesn't leave the shop. Bestin's Collision Center in Carbondale, the trusted name in collision repair in Northeastern Pennsylvania. What does it mean to be an expert? Does it mean getting the job done right? Or being able to pinpoint a problem and quickly find a solution? Whatever the meaning, the team at NJS are your experts in hydraulic and pneumatic components. So whether you need a custom hose built on the spot or a cylinder repaired from the ground up, the experts at NJS are there when you need them. And with the area's largest hose and fittings warehouse, NJS has thousands of the parts you need in stock and ready to go. NJS Route 6 Mayfield online at njsco.com. NJS is proud to call this area home and proud to sponsor our area athletes on Adams Cable Channel 7. And the Foresters have the basketball to open up the second quarter play and Max Urbis converts on the interior to tie the game at 14. Uh, now Castleberry is big. I'll tell you what, he just needs to get set, just turn and shoot. Yeah, we got we have a great battle going on under the basket yeah. there as Logan Ayotte scores off the glass for the Warriors and they lead by a pair 16 to 14. Now the Foresters will set it up in their half court offense as Colin Baylor will give it up. DJ Heath taking control. In the paint back over. That's the Heath way open. That's the Here way comes the way. outside jumper. Doesn't fall. Rebounded there by Bartholomew. And once again, Bartholomew will have to kick it back outside and reset the Forrester offense. <coughs> Try to work the ball inside. Pass was intended for Max Urbis. Too hot to handle, yeah. and they turn it over. It was there, but if you looked at it, though, Steve, he catches it, but he's going away from the basket with it. He's right. actually going to go out of the lane, so, you know, maybe it's not worth the, even making that pass there. If he was set up looking at it. And driving to the glass and scoring is Isaac Gesford, the 5'8 junior point guard averaging almost eight a ball game. And he gives the Warriors an 18 to 14 advantage. Foresters with Colin Baylor looking inside. Max Urbis hemmed in. And they'll bring it back outside on the perimeter as Colin Baylor will survey the defense of the Warriors. Now that's a familiar name if you tuned into Carbondale football this year as DJ Heath goes up with the shot and it's off the mark. Castlebury had the rebound and here come the Warriors. Elk Lake with good movement in the offense and they continue to pound the ball inside. Castlebury almost lost it. And Elk Lake will get it back as Isaac Gesford will dish it back outside. Once again, inside they go. Castlebury off the turnaround, couldn't get it to fall. And the Foresters will have the basketball with 5.45 to play in the half. Not a good angle for Castlebury's last shot. Instead of going towards the basket, towards the, towards the rim, he went towards the corner of the bank board. And of course, that angle gets all messed up there. Got to go strong to the basket. Jump stop, hit the, hit the four-foot jumper. Heat in a lot of traffic. Urbis open and converts. 
It is 18 to 17 as the Foresters answer. That was, I, I love that battle going on between Castleberry and Urbis. Yeah, that's, that's a, that's a jam. I got my eye on that also. <laughs> that's a throwback to the it old is. days as Ayotte dishes off and the pass was tipped away by the Foresters. Yeah, back in the day when you had a couple of big guys like that, Glenn, there were actually two games going on, on the perimeter and under the basket as the Warriors come up empty on that possession. And coast to coast, D.J. Heath will turn and score for the Foresters, and they will take a one-point lead, 19-18. to 18. Well, he finally got a, got a, a deuce that will get him going, I'm sure. Once again, Castlebury taking the... Bounce pass, and the whistle will be called on the Foresters. Yeah, it's, it's that reach around. They're trying to reach around. And that's his second, too. So second that's... personal foul on Max Urbis. And the Foresters come Good. up with the rebound on this play. And in transition, it's Colin Baylor to run the offense. Here's Heath putting on the brakes. He needs help looking for Urbis. Pass intercepted. Hayot picks it off for the Warriors, and they trail by one, 19 to 18, as we near four and a half minutes remaining in this first half. Noah Gesford dishes off, and they look inside for Castlebury pass intercepted right there. And in transition, here's an easy layup for DJ Heath. And the Foresters are out to a 21 to 18 lead. Timeout is called with 417 remaining as we go to a break on Adams Cable High School Basketball. Providing the ultimate in professional service is a tradition. At Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated, Carbondale. For more than 50 years, families in Carbondale and its surrounding area have used our two Hospital Street and 74 North Main Street locations for a traditional service, cremation or memorial services, or a service of personal preference. Contact Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated to handle every detail. After the timeout by Elk Lake, with 417 remaining, Foresters lead this one 21 to 18, and Elk Lake will inbound the basketball and bring it the length of the court. Little full court press. Oh. And they turn the ball over on the inbound as Colin Baylor has it. And it will be John Connellaw oh. going up with a shot rejected there by Castlebury and a whistle. Ball was uh, knocked out of bounds, no foul no. called. No. Stepped on the bounce trying to save it. And for the Foresters, they get the ball into Heath, and he will survey the defense of Elk Lake. And dishing off Max Urbis from the corner. Misfires on the three-point attempt. Castlebury collects the carom. Well, here's Elk Lake with a... Chance to tie the game as they trail 21 to 18. Castlebury in the lane, lost the basketball. Good defense by the Foresters. In transition, Colin Baylor on the run to Urbis for two. Pinpoint passing results in a field goal, and it's 23 to 18, and, the Foresters. Yeah, it all started with the, the big guy trying to dribble underneath and everybody getting their hands there. Keep it up top, turn around, pivot, and shoot the jumper. Ayotte goes to the glass and lays it up and it rolls off the iron. He gets his own rebound, fires it up and scores. Logan Ayotte, the sophomore, great job under the boards and the Warriors are now trailing by three. Baylor double teamed, he needs help. He'll dish off, they'll work it back outside. Here is Heath under the glass, nowhere to go. And Max Erbis will hook it up with the left hand. Max Erbis is around the ball all night. That's all you need to do, pick it up, shoot it. And he gives the Foresters a five point lead as we near two and a half minutes remaining here in first half action. Dawson Sherman. And it will be Ayotte to survey the defense. Sherman from the corner from downtown, doesn't fall. 
Castlebury with the rebound and the follow-up. No, once again, it's good. Castlebury banging the boards here in this first half, and the Warriors trail 25-22. Forrester set it up with Baylor. Couldn't pull the trigger on a 15-footer. Urbis dishes off, and here's Heath baseline. No, air ball, Sherman with the rebound. Forrester's got to move the basketball a little bit. And the Warriors turn it over. And on the fast break, here's Urbis to the glass. It rolls off the iron. And on the turnaround jumper, it's good by D.J. Heath. And it's a 27-22 Forrester lead. Logan Ayotte, crossover dribble, gives it up. Inside, Castlebury. From the corner, the outside jumper is good. That was John Heitzman wearing number 21. He's a freshman, and he knocked oh. down a big shot. It's 27-25. Conalog fires it up, and it's off the glass. Rebound will go to Heitzman. You keep your hands up. It's all intimidation. Open look for Sherman, and this jumper is off the mark. Battle for the ball, and I believe the Foresters, let's check this, yep. the Warriors will have the possession as Dawson Sherman will put the ball in play along the baseline. Long pass goes to Isaac Gesford. And from the corner, Sherman open air ball, and D.J. Heath has it for the Foresters. Here they come with under a minute left in the first half as Max Urbis takes the pass from Heath for the bucket, and it's 29-25. Forest City, your leader. Max Urbis is on fire. Castlebury in the paint, off the turnaround. Basket is good, and the foul. Well, I thought he might have taken a step. Yeah, it looked that way, but he had a little bump, too, though. But I thought guys are just bouncing off of him. <laughs> He's a big boy. 29-27, your score. Foresters lead the Warriors, and Wyatt Castlebury, the six foot six senior, on the stripe and rolls it in. First personal foul, by the way, on Forest City and DJ Heath. Or let's check that. The fifth personal team foul, I yeah. should say, first on DJ Heath. Off the turnaround shot. It doesn't drop for Devon Reams. And with 19 seconds remaining in this first half, Ayotte will pivot. Nowhere to go on a traveling violation. And the Warriors with a missed opportunity, trailing by one, 29-28. <coughs> Ten to shoot for the Foresters. Reams will pull up with a short jumper. It's off the iron, and Castlebury rebounds three seconds. They're going to have to act quickly. They get it to Sherman at the buzzer, and the shot doesn't fall. And that will bring us to halftime in today's Lackawanna League Division Four matchup with the Foresters leading the Warriors 29 to 28 as we go to a break on Adams Cable High School Basketball. Save a check, save a stamp, and save yourself time with Adams Cable Easy Pay. A simple one-time setup of automatic payments from your preferred bank account or credit card is all you need to do to enroll. It's fast, convenient, secure, and best of all, free. Never worry about a late payment again. Adams Cable makes it effortless. For more information regarding online payment options and to enroll in EasyPay, please visit AdamsCable.com. You deserve expert heating, cooling, and plumbing service. So, just call Spall. T.E. Spall & Son has been serving Northeastern Pennsylvania with expert customer service for 36 years in all phases of residential and commercial heating, cooling, and plumbing. So, just call Spall for the expert service you deserve. Visit them at callspall.com. For service, remember, just call Spall. When it comes to keeping your vehicle maintained and problem free, Jerry's Tire and Auto Service in Carbondale has you covered. Call Jerry's for brake service, oil changes, state inspections, quality tires, wheel alignment and rotation to enhance your vehicle's performance. I'm Jerry Jablonowski. Call 282 Tire for dependable automotive service and name brand tires at Jerry's Tire and Auto Service in Carbondale. Welcome.
Welcome back to the Julius Brzezelski Gym at Forest City High School, where we are at halftime in today's Lackawanna League Division IV battle between Elk Lake and Forest City, with the Foresters holding a one-point lead over Elk Lake 29 to 28. At the end of one quarter of play, it was Elk Lake leading Forest City 14 to 12, but the Foresters came back in quarter number two, outscoring Elk Lake 17 to 14 to take a one point lead here at halftime. Glenn, great ball game between Elk Lake and Forest City. And what's really intriguing about this game is the battle going on under the boards yeah. between Wyatt Castlebury and Max Urbis. It is. It is. Uh, it's nice to watch. It's nice to watch how they're how they're setting themselves, getting position, rebounding, putting the ball back up, going to get it. It's aggressiveness. Hey, you got to play like that if you want to win. Uh, Matt Urbis came out. He got out on fire. Castleberry slowly. All of a sudden, he got going, and uh, how about he has. Uh, he has nine rebounds already. Six on the defensive end and three offensive. And uh, uh, for a city on the other side, usually making some, some of the good shots and not getting too many extra second shots because of the fact that Castleberry's in there. But the game is good. It's a, it's a good, it's got a nice pace to it. I have a funny feeling uh, one of the teams will come out, put a little bit more pressure on. And uh, But you gotta be you got to be careful now. you you got... Bizek, who really didn't play much in this second quarter with two fouls, and Urbis with two fouls. So, and Castleberry, uh, they really, uh, there's not very many f fouls. Uh, Castleberry's got one, so that's it. Could be uh, a problem for Forest City if if they can't stop him, box him out, and keep him off the boards. Well, let's take a look at the uh, scoring for both ball clubs here in the first half. For for Elk Lake. Uh, uh, Isaac, Isaac uh, Gessford has a field goal. Way, Wyatt Castleberry has uh, 11 points. He's five field goals and, and one for two from the foul line. As I said, he has nine, nine rebounds. Uh, Sherman has two threes for six. Heitzman has one three for, for three. And Ayat has two, three field goals for six for a total of 28. They have uh, a total of... Uh, 14 rebounds in the game, and they committed uh, six turnovers. Uh, for Forest City, Bisek has uh, four points, but got in early foul trouble, so he sat a lot, lot of the, that uh, part of that second first uh, first quarter into the second quarter. Uh, DJ Heath finally got on track. He has three field goals for six. Max Urbis has been around the ball on the offensive end all night. He happened to be in the right spot at the right time and making those those in sh inside shots. So he's got some he's got some bulk, so he can move people around. He has 11 points and he hit a three also. So he has he has four field goals and a three for 11. Uh, Braden Piatak has a field goal, and Brad Bartholomew uh, has two threes for six for a total of. 29. Uh, they have uh, combined 12, uh, 12 rebounds, and they committed four turnovers. So it's a good one. It's it's a good one. It's it's a battle right now. It's a battle inside. Uh, there's there's been a few threes hit, uh, for, especially from um, uh, Elk Lake. Well, both teams, I guess. Uh, so uh, I guess. Defense now has to take over, and you have to find a way to stop. For if you're Forest City, how to stop Castleberry inside, and the other way around, you have to stop Max Urbis, who's having to have a real nice game himself on the other end of the court. If you're just tuning in, we are at halftime in today's Lackawanna League Division Four battle between Elk Lake and Forest City. Forrester is up by one, 29 to 28 here at halftime. We are going to uh, go to a break and we'll come right back with more Adams Cable High School basketball after this timeout. Napa know how, Napa know how. Your local Napa dealer, Carbondale Auto Parts, has been serving the area for over 38 years with quality automotive replacement parts, tools, and accessories. Experience the Napa know-how difference with great service you've come to know and trust from the staff at Carbondale Auto Parts, your Napa know-how folks. Napa know-how, Napa know-how, Napa know-how, Napa know-how. 
Looking for the right flooring for your home, lifestyle, and budget? Visit Tom's Floor Shop in Childs for the latest advancements in flooring to enhance the rooms in your home. The experts at Tom's Floor Shop are there to help you style your home in contemporary elegance and classic beauty with a wide variety of name brand carpeting, hardwood, vinyl, and professional installation. All roads lead to where great floors begin at Tom's Floor Shop Exit 6 off the Casey Highway in Childs. Welcome back to more Adams Cable High School basketball. We are at halftime in today's Lackawanna League Division IV matchup between the Foresters and the Warriors. And the Foresters lead by one here at halftime, 29 to 28. Alongside Glenn Muskowski, Chris Nanfell, Claire Seymour, and Sal Balzoni of Frankie Carl Productions. I'm Steve Young. Great to have you with us tonight for all of the action of high school basketball. We're right back here Friday night, Glenn, when uh, yes. the Foresters will entertain Susquehanna. Yes, and then uh, hopefully we don't uh, get snowed out, but uh, I, I think, think by that time it will be fine. Hopefully by then <laughs> uh, things will clear up. And, uh, you know, Glenn, uh, taking a look at some numbers here, if it comes down to uh, free throw shooting this year, Elk Lake is uh, shooting 68% from the foul line and the Foresters at 55% overall. Well, yeah, well, you need to make those foul shots no, no matter what. My wife has a good thought about that. She says, they call them free throws. They're free. Make them. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Easier Absolutely. said than done. <laughs> And I love your thought process. It makes sense. It's free, you know. <laughs> hey, if it's free, make three. If you get fouled on a three, on, I'll be yep. on the arc, right? If it's free, make three. So, it's big second half still to come here on Adams Cable High School basketball, and uh, taking a look at some more numbers, Elk Lake uh, from beyond the arc coming into this game, they had 81 three-point shots and the Foresters uh, converting on 45 for a total of 135 points. So Elk Lake pretty good uh, three point shooting team but they're down by one here as we get set for third quarter action. Yeah it looks like uh, 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 I, I think personally they should they, they should uh, Forest City should spread the ball out a little bit more and get somebody on a high post. They can move it around, get the ball on the high post, turn and look. You could you could hit you could hit the low post if somebody comes up, right? A you could hit the corner from there. You could you could throw it right back out in the wing and get a shot. But and uh, and Elk Lake, I think they just have to gonna have to compound that ball inside to Castleberry. He seem, he seems to be doing a, a nice job and hopefully uh, he doesn't get in any foul trouble. He's in good shape right now. We have to we have to watch Bazik and. Uh, and Urbus, they don't get a quick third. You know, you don't need that. And then you're then you're kind of handcuffed the rest of the rest of the half. Well, Glenn, while you were talking here, I was just thinking about the rich basketball tradition between the Foresters and Elk Lake. And thinking back, I saw Bob Stevenson play oh. at the oh. old Carbondale CYC, mm -hmm. which a lot of people you know might remember as the CYC or St. Rose High School or Sacred Heart Gym. But uh, I saw him play in a playoff game there. And, he was just fantastic. He, he was a great player. Brings back it's, a lot of memories. And, uh, and uh, Bob Stevenson, Jim Wallace, two great ones to come out of Elk Lake, along with a lot of other ones. Yeah, there were a lot of great players as Elk Lake will go right to the basket. Ayotte couldn't finish. There's a battle for the ball, and the Foresters come up with it as Dylan Bezek, who was in the game, picked it up, and Forest City with a one-point lead and the basketball. All right. Elk Man. Lake's in the zone. Let's get the move. Let's move the ball a little bit here. Let's get it going. And out beyond the arc, it's DJ Heath. And they're trying to uh, spread yeah. things out a little bit. And Heath will launch a long three and knocks it down. It's 32 28 as the Foresters open up the third quarter he, scoring. He's averaging uh, close to. Uh, uh, 14, 15 points a game, so he's got to get the, he's got to get some shots. Oh, look at that pass by Castlebury and Noah Gesford couldn't finish under the glass. Dylan Bezek along the baseline, 
And now the Foresters go to the glass and the shot doesn't fall. Rebound will go to Castlebury. And Elk Lake now will set it up, trailing 32 to 28. Isaac Gesford gives it up. And on the perimeter, Logan Ayotte defended there by Bartholomew. Open look for Sherman, he couldn't convert. Castlebury with the rebound and the power move nice. for two. A nice power, you're right, exactly. A nice power move. 32 and to 30. Hands. As the Warriors answer. Great matchup between the Foresters and the Warriors and Forest City turns it over as they were looking yeah. under the glass and the ball goes out of bounds. He was there, he just had fumbled the ball and kicked it out of bounds. 32-30, Forrester's your leader with under six to play here in the third quarter. Logan Ayotte on a drive, fires it up off the glass, too heavy, rebound will go to Dylan Bezik. He'll dish off and Colin Baylor along the right wing will give it up. Baylor looks inside. Good movement in the offense and so a, a nice, shot nice right there from Bezik. Great Colin give and Baylor go. Baylor scores inside. That was pretty. And it's a four point Forrester lead. Sherman open and the shot rolls off the iron collected there by Brad Bartholomew for the Foresters defended by Logan Ayoff. Colin Baylor outside, and the shot from Ooh. downtown doesn't fall for the Foresters. And in transition, here come the Warriors down by four. Well, that one was three quarters of the way down. Yeah, just a little bit too strong as Isaac Gesford dishes off and passes intercepted. Foresters have it on the run. Colin Baylor dishes off and right to the glass is Bezik for two. And it's a six point Forrester lead, 36 to four, to 30 with 440 to play third quarter. Isaac Gesford, Sherman couldn't pull the trigger. Good defense by the Foresters. Noah Gesford will give it up. And this time Sherman will launch it and knocks it down from beyond the arc. And it's 36 to 33. The Warriors run a, ran a good offense right there. Now, players battle for the ball, and Elk Lake will come up with it. Chance right here to tie the game. Ayotte hey, in the corner. Stepped on the line. Turns it over. I don't know. Was that, was, did he step on the line, or did, did he? I don't think he walked. And a missed opportunity for Elk Lake with under three to play here in the third quarter at the Julius Brzezelski Gym. Foresters go to work now. And here's a pull-up jump shot that rolls off the iron by Bezik. Warriors quickly across midcourt. Down by three. Dawson Sherman open from the baseline, air ball. Heath collects it. He wants to go coast to coast, dishing off underneath to Bezek for two. Boy, four cities looking. They're finding the open guy, looking good. Some pinpoint passing results in the field goal, and it's 38 to 33. Logan Ayotte will survey the defense of Forest yeah. City, and he turns it over as Colin Baylor will go to the glass for an easy layup. And the Foresters lead this one 40 to 33. There is a timeout on the court as we go to a break here on Adams Cable High School Basketball. When you need collision repair, turn to the professionals at Bestin's Auto Body and Collision Center to restore your vehicle back to its original condition. For over 34 years, Bestin's has been providing full service collision repair with exceptional customer service. At Bestin's, their motto is, every job is perfect or it doesn't leave the shop. Bestin's Collision Center in Carbondale, the trusted name in collision repair in Northeastern Pennsylvania. 
What does it mean to be an expert? Does it mean getting the job done right? Or being able to pinpoint a problem and quickly find a solution? Whatever the meaning, the team at NJS are your experts in hydraulic and pneumatic components. So whether you need a custom hose built on the spot or a cylinder repaired from the ground up, the experts at NJS are there when you need them. And with the area's largest hose and fittings warehouse, NJS has thousands of the parts you need in stock and ready to go. NJS Route 6 Mayfield, online at NJSCO.com. NJS is proud to call this area home and proud to sponsor our area athletes on Adams Cable Channel 7. Back at the Julius Brzezelski Gym with just over three minutes to play here in this third quarter and the Foresters leading 40 to 33. Elk Lake will go back to work in their half-court offense. Uh, for Elk, Forest City in a in a man-a-man. -a -man. And it was Noah Gesford losing the ball on a drive to the basket. Foresters in transition, turn it over. Dawson Sherman fires a pass, and it's to another Elk Lake turnover as the pass was intercepted by Bezek. Ball goes out of bounds, and Elk Lake will have it. So <laughs> things getting a little sloppy coming out of the uh, timeout as head coach Richard Emmons says, hey, guys, calm down, slow it down a bit. Uh, you got, you got again. You got uh, four sitting in a man to man. I'd sag off with helps uh, with some help defense from the from with the Castleberry inside. That's what they're going to need because got to look inside to him. Isaac Gesford defended there by Colin Baylor. Ayot on the wing, looking inside for Castleberry, and they turn it over. Long down court pass to Bezik, and he lays it up off the glass. And as we have two minutes left in the third quarter, the Foresters are out to a 42-33 lead. And right there at midcourt, a reach-in foul is going to be called on Colin Baylor, the 5'11 junior guard. Logan Ayotte will check out of the lineup for Elk Lake. And John Heitzman checks in. <laughs> open look for Isaac Gesford. Well, there's a miscue somewhere. How do you, how's that guy wide open on an out-of-bounds play? And he's just stood there. 42-36 <laughs> as the Warriors take advantage of the defensive breakdown by the Foresters. Max Urbis setting it up on the perimeter. They look inside. It is Heath for two. 44-36. Sherman defended there by Max Service. Gasford gives it up. Heitzman to the glass Good and scores with the right hand. See, when he takes that dribble and he and he turns that corner and turns the body to the basket, perfect. 44-38. Heitzman providing a spark there for Elk Lake. And now the Foresters with under one minute remaining here in the third quarter. We'll have Bezik with an open look, and he got the bounce. Yep, you can't leave him open that uh, 12 feet from the basket. 46 to 38. Foresters lead it. Sherman, three-point land. Ooh, we might have a double dribble. Double dribble, and the Warriors will turn it over. Seven turnovers this quarter alone for uh, uh, Elk Lake. That's not good. Final 35 seconds of quarter number three here at the home of the Foresters, Julius Przelski Gym. As Bezik will hand it off to Heath. And will they play for one here, Glenn? Well, they should. As long as they hang on to the basketball. Well, you want to keep it in the middle of the floor. You don't want to, you want to get it on the wing or down the corner where you can get trapped. Clock winding down here in the third. We are at oh, nine good seconds. Heath Good to move. the glass oh. with the left hand, couldn't finish. Five what seconds on the clock. Step. In transition, Sherman to the glass at the buzzer. No. And that will bring it into the third quarter of play at the Julius Brzezelski Gym with the Foresters in front. 46 to 38 over Elk Lake on Adams Cable High School Basketball. 
Providing the ultimate in professional service is a tradition. At Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated, Carbondale. For more than 50 years, families in Carbondale and its surrounding area have used our two Hospital Street and 74 North Main Street locations for a traditional service, cremation or memorial services, or a service of personal preference. Contact Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated to handle every detail. You deserve expert heating, cooling, and plumbing service. So, just call Spall. T.E. Spall & Son has been serving Northeastern Pennsylvania with expert customer service for 36 years in all phases of residential and commercial heating, cooling, and plumbing. So, just call Spall for the expert service you deserve. Visit them at callspall.com. For service, remember, just call Spall. Welcome back to the Julius Brzezowski Gym alongside Gwen Muskowski. Chris Nanfelt and Claire Seymour handling the live Adams Cable broadcast and Sal Balzoni from Frankie Carl, Carl Productions on camera. I'm Steve Young. Great to have you with us. Foresters open up the fourth quarter with the basketball and an eight-point lead. Baylor drives to the glass and scores to open it up for Forest City. They now lead by ten. From the corner, Sherman is open. Couldn't finish, and in transition, here is Bezik with an easy layup. And we are going to have a quick timeout by Richard Emmons of Elk Lake, and we'll keep it right here and thank all of the great sponsors who make high school basketball possible. By the Comfort Doctors, T.E. Spall and Son, Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing of Carbondale, Jerry's Tire and Auto Service, your source for quality tires. Tonight's game also brought to you by your local Napa Auto Parts store, Carbondale Auto Parts. Tom's Floor Shop, your first step to a beautiful home, Main Street Childs. By Beston's Auto Body and Collision Center, quality repairs and superior service. NJS Systems and Controls, Route 6 Mayfield, for experience, dependability, and 24-hour service. Thanks to Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated with locations at 74 North Main Street and 2 Hospital Street and your starting lineups tonight presented by the Roselle Department Store. Well, a big third quarter by the Foresters, Glenn, as they outscored Elk Lake 17 to 10. They led 46-38 at the end of three. Yep. They come out here in the fourth, up 50 to 38. Just going through the basket strong, make, uh, playing good, solid defense. And for the most part, Glenn, not many fouls in this no, ball game. No, not, not it's been a good game. And there's a pass intercepted by Devon Reams. He'll dish off under the glass, oh. and the Foresters couldn't come up. They couldn't finish, and they get the ball back, and they will go to the glass, and they score on the bucket by Heath, and it's 52 to 38. Dawson Sherman, three-point line, fires the pass cross court, and it is Ayotte with an open look, and whoa, ball was knocked away, no foul called yeah. as Heisman was battling for the rebound. Sherman looking to inbound, pass will go to Isaac Guestford, short jumper, air ball. Dylan Bezik has it in transition. It's Heath now for the Foresters, and he'll bring it back outside and reset the Forester offense as they lead 52 to 38. Right here, Glenn, with the big lead, Just and you could patient. kind of you could be a little more selective. Just be patient. That's all. As nah, they try to work it back outside, the pass is picked off. Castlebury intercepted the pass. Ayotte up with the shot, and it's rejected by Bezik. Here is DJ Heath, coast to coast. The spin move off the glass. Oh, yes. good move. Oh, I like that. I like that play. 54-38. Foresters hitting on all cylinders in this ballgame as we have under six remaining here in the fourth quarter. Isaac Guessford will set it up. Ayotte near side. Heitzman inside, Castlebury, there's that move, and it's short. Castlebury got the rebound and kicked it back outside. 
Open look for Sherman, and he yes. let it fly for three. Uh, Castleberry, the problem with him, some of his shots are he's not going, he's not turning, getting a complete turn and getting to the, the going towards the glass. He's fading away like with a little one-handed push, and he's, it's, it's not, it's, he's, he's not, uh, hasn't have a solid base. Yeah, that was an outside jumper by Bizek that was off the mark. And with 5.16 to play here in the fourth quarter, the Foresters will inbound the basketball. Colin Baylor will look to trigger the ball in play. Heath taking control. Right to the glass, gives it up. From the corner, it's Urbis for three. And the six-foot sophomore knocks it down to give Forest City a 57-41 lead. Ayotte open, and that ball is off the top of the glass, out of bounds. That didn't hit anything, did it? Yes, top of the uh, backboard. Oh, did the it? Glass, yes. Oh, it did. Well, just, uh, did it go over? If it doesn't go over. It went over. It hit the top and started to yeah. come over. So. Uh, okay. Better take the glasses off. I can't see, can't see far with the glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> Time for a new prescription. Well, I, I, well, it's, <laughs> you know, the old man bifocals. Yeah. <laughs> Urbis once again yeah. rattles in a three. He was wide open, and he gives Forest City a 60 to 41 advantage. As we near four and a half to play, it's Heitzman pulling up with the jump shot defended there by Devon Reams and the foul. That will place John Heitzman, the freshman, on the stripe where he has converted on two of three field goals this year. And this one is perfect. 60 to 44. Clock the big factor for Elk Lake. They need uh, a defensive stand right here and get back on offense and get some points. And DJ Heath. Well, that's the Forest City got the right idea. Just be patient. They are going to uh, spread things out as we near the four minute mark remaining as Heath dishes off underneath and is called for traveling. That shuffled his feet. Call there made by official Larry Gabriel III. And Elk Lake now inbounding the basketball and they will bring it the length of the court as we are under three, uh, four minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. Logan Ayotte dishing off underneath. Castlebury lost the basketball. Got to be ready for the pass. That's, he wasn't paying attention, obviously. He wanted to go to the basket. He had to take the ball with him. That's the only problem. Well, we are going to have our call spall play of the game, but we might have more than one here tonight, Glenn. <laughs> well, I, well I'll, I'll give you mine. It, it's not it's it's not a play it, it's two plays and it just happened just recently with with 450 to go to, to go in the in the in the game in the game uh, uh, Max Urbis two back-to-back -back threes we'll call that the call small plays of the game I was thinking mm -hmm. the same thing Glenn he is just having a great night yep. from beyond the arc as Heath will bring it back outside and with the Foresters leading 60 to 44, being very selective offensively here. And there's a reach in uh -huh. foul by Isaac Gesford to stop the clock with just over three minutes to play. Sixty to forty-four, your score as the Foresters inbound the basketball, and with the lead, they could just spread things out as Colin Baylor will give it up to DJ Heath, and this is what you call clock management. And going to the basket, wide open was Dylan Bezik. Nice strong power move by Bezik. Sixty-two to forty-four, the Foresters pulling up with an. Open look was John Heitzman, and going the other way, DJ Heath had the ball knocked away, and the Foresters actually touched it last. Let's check this now as the officials will get together 
to confirm. And you know, what do we got? No, Foresters Forrester will have it. Yep. DJ Heath to trigger the ball in play. And Forest City leading 62-44. We'll just take some time off the clock right here and try to put another victory in the win column. And they throw it away as Heitzman intercepted the pass quickly. Isaac Gessward will give it up. And Dawson Sherman will work it back outside. Oh, yeah. Castlebury lost the basketball, See, got it back. And Elk Lake has another chance right here with under two to play in the fourth quarter. Here's Castlebury. Couldn't finish under the glass. And this is Devon Reams dishing off underneath. Mm -hmm. And that is good for two as Dylan Bezik scores to give the Foresters a 64-44 lead. Open look from the outside goes off the mark by Isaac Gesford and Castlebury scores from in the lane. Well, we'll run down some of the high scores, Glenn, in the last minute of the game, okay. game here. Well, Dylan Bezik had four points and two fouls early and ended up with uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 in the second half for a total of 20. DJ Heath has two, four, six, eight, 10, 13, 14. Max Erbis had 11 and two threes in the second. He had uh, he had 17, so those three guys have, have uh, the majority of the points. They, they played very well both ends of the court and on, obviously on the offensive end and certainly in the sec yeah. second half. Yeah, some pretty good sco yeah. uh, balanced uh, scoring yeah, yeah. for Forest City. Yeah. We'll take a look yeah. at Elk Lake quickly. Uh, Wyatt Castleberry had 11, but he goes shut down pretty good in the in the in the second half. He's got 17. Uh, Dawson Sherman has four threes for tw 12. Uh, John Heitzman has a, a three and uh, and five more points. So he's got eight. Uh, basically, that's about it uh, when it comes to group of scoring. Great game uh, by uh, Forest City, uh, both on the offense and defensive end. Uh, they came out in the second half and really did the job when they went, they went to that man-to-man. -man. Well, right here, turnover by the Foresters, and then Elk Lake returns the favor as they turn the basketball over with 43 seconds left as John Duffy goes to his bench with the Foresters leading 64 to 46 as John Conalog will run the offense now for the Foresters. And Conalog is just going to try to kill some clock right here. And Elk Lake putting a lot of pressure on him and it results in a turnover as they ought forced a turnover and then a whistle with 26 seconds to play. So this Forrester team undefeated in division play and they will remain that way going into Friday's battle with Susquehanna. And we will have that broadcast for you coming up here on Adams Cable as Isaac Gesford launches a three. It's off the mark. And with 15 seconds, Elk Lake with McMicken dishing it offside, outside, and Gesford will launch it again. And it doesn't fall. And with seven seconds to play, the Foresters will just run out the remaining time. And that will do it. The Foresters are victorious here tonight over Elk Lake by the score of 64 to 46. Forest City overall now with a record of eight wins and six losses in Division Four. They are six and zero. Oh. Elk Lake overall falls to five and ten. And in Division Four, they are now at two wins and four losses. So, Glenn, great game Good. by the Foresters. Balanced scoring attack. They did a great job Bal here tonight. Balanced scoring attack, rebounding was good, great passes, uh, and the defense in the second half was uh, obviously uh, they came out in that man to man and they really did a nice job. They shut Castleberry right down. They shut they shut the the, the Warriors right down. Great game, great great game plan by the coach. It was worked to perfection.
And that is going to wrap it up here at the Julius Brzezowski Gym. And it's all been brought to you tonight by Adams Cable Service, by the Comfort Doctors, T.E. Small and Son, Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing of Carbondale, by your local Napa Auto Parts store, Carbondale Auto Parts, Tom's Floor Shop, your first step to a beautiful home, Main Street Childs, by Beston's Auto Body and Collision Center, quality repairs, and superior service by NJS Systems and Controls, Route 6 Mayfield. Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated with locations at 74 North Main Street and 2 Hospital Street. And your starting lineups brought to you today by the Roselle De Department Store. Special thanks to Athletic Director Brian Durkin here at Forest City High School, Steve Glynn, Technology Coordinator, Paul McCormick, Technology Specialist, and the Forest City Regional Maintenance Department. For Glenn Muskowski, Chris Nanfeld, Claire Seymour, and Sal Balzoni, I'm Steve Young. The Foresters victorious tonight over Elk Lake, 64 to 46. Till next time, so long from Forest City High School.